if there's this kind of technology in the future, just that everything that's shown in this film, I'm very excited for it if I live to see it, I suppose. Hello once again watchers of Good Movies, my name is Nick Pell and this is once again coming from my apartment. So we are going to talk about the film Tomorrowland, which just came out this weekend. So let's dive into it. I believe that's based on a book. I have no idea who it's by or if it's even actually based on a book. I'm pretty sure it is. And so that's kind of inspiration for this film. It follows a girl named Casey who is played by Britt Robertson and she is someone who is just intrigued by the world. She likes to know how things work and she is very good at figuring that out and then grasping onto it very very quickly and she's very technically savvy and she's just very very bright as an individual and so this is what kind of draws her out as a candidate for Tomorrowland which is this this potential utopia per se. It's like in another dimension and all the world's brightest individuals came together from many different fields and professions to create this place and just explore their imagination and it's just really really cool. George Clooney plays the opposite of Burr Robertson. He is this old and uh, once boy genius type of person. He's an inventor and he's the one who kind of guides her towards Tomorrowland kind of hesitantly but still does it. One thing that I really did enjoy actually, and I think that could be a, its own movie in itself, is the first 10 to 15 minutes of this film where we get to see Frank as just this boy who is just inspired to create things. We see him at the New York World's Fair and uh, he's just trying to present this jetpack that he created because he's, he can apparently. And then he himself eventually finds his way to Tomorrowland and he, he forms the relationship with uh, Rafi Cassidy's character, Athena, and I, w I would love to see a film about this, this child who discovers this new world and just seeing him grow up in it, interact with it, and kind of see the eventual downfall of the place that kind of is in need of saving by Casey. And I, that would be really cool for me. I was really intrigued by the first 15 minutes of this movie film. It was just really, really cool. It was a neat sequence. It allowed uh, us to see the wonder of this world and the potential that it has, and it was just really, really well done. I also actually liked that they spent a large amount of time in the present day, in this time period, in the film itself. We see a lot of the, the Tomorrowland technology used in this futuristic world. There's a gun that can turn people to dust, and there's other laser things, and there's enhanced security, and just really cool things that are not possible as far as I'm aware in this current day and age. And so just seeing those really used for about the first hour, the first hour of this film is spent in this time period for about 90% of it. And I, I was actually kind of surprised that I enjoyed it that much. It took them about an hour to get to Tomorrowland physically. And I was surprised at how much I enjoyed the current sequences. The movie flows very, very nicely. It does not slow down really at all. As far as I could tell, there's a few parts where it like talks about things or is trying to explain some stuff. But for the most part, this film is a very fast paced. It keeps moving. Everything is kind of essential to the overall plot. And it just works really nicely. That said, once they do eventually get to Tomorrowland, I kind of started to lose a little bit of interest in terms of the plot. It wasn't vast or I didn't like hate the last hour, but just seeing the immense wonder of this place and the build up to it and seeing what it actually is, it, I don't know, it just kind of bummed me out a little bit, I guess. It's not as like livid and lively as uh, one would think based on trailers. And I don't know, it just, it wasn't what I was expecting. I, I knew nothing about this movie really going in outside from the very basic concept. There are these robots that show up every so often throughout the film, about the first hour of the film, and they're trying to take down two lead characters. And then once they do something, they're just gone, and they never show up again. That kind of surprised me, because it seemed like they would be able to teleport from here to Tomorrowland somewhat easily, and they weren't just living in plain sight in our world for the remainder of their robotic lives. It just seemed a little bit weird to me, and I was just kind of looking for them throughout the second half of the film, and they just never showed up. I did like what was ultimately the, the main conflict of the film in regards to the apocalypse, and humanity kind of steering itself towards the apocalypse, and nobody really asking how can we fix this before 
time is running out. We're kind of just eagerly awaiting it, per se. It points out, like, in books, movies, TV shows, video games, everything, this concept of the apocalypse is kind of uh, used for entertainment, and it's, it's kind of true. And we ourselves are kind of steering ourselves towards it. There's an epidemic of obesity and starvation throughout the world, and it's just a very interesting thing that uh, Hugh, Hugh Laurie is also in this film. He plays kind of the, the one of the guys in the film, and uh, he, he brings about this, this idea, and he has about a five-minute speech about it, and it's just kind of an interesting thing to think about, and I really didn't appreciate that because it's kind of an interesting idea that we ourselves are kind of pushing ourselves as a race towards the apocalypse and it's it's not something that we're actively trying to prevent as a species. The special effects in this film are also really really nice whenever they go to Tomorrowland and see all this futuristic te technology and the guns that shoot off and everything it all looks really really nice and I couldn't see any really obvious CGI throughout the film. Obviously a lot of it is going to be CGI, but it looks phenomenally well done. And then the ending for the film does set up something of a sequel. So if this film does do well in theaters, I wouldn't be surprised if this had a Tomorrowland 2 or something like that. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I did see this film in IMAX, so my theater now has an IMAX, which is fantastic for me. So yeah, that's why I enjoyed it so much, but for the most part, yeah, I did actually enjoy Tomorrowland. It was, it was good. For about the first hour, it dragged a little bit towards the end. It had a satisfying enough conclusion, and uh, I don't know. Um, I, I did enjoy it. I walked out of it happy that I had seen it, and uh, yeah, definitely check it out if you are interested in the film whatsoever. So those are my thoughts, guys. Let me know what yours are in the comments down below. If you have seen Tomorrowland, did you like it as much as I did? Did you hate it more than I did? Let me know. Like, fair comment, and subscribe. Once again, if you so choose, I'd appreciate it immensely, and as always, remember people, my name is Nick Pell, and once again, keep on watching.